Hey there! Welcome to Professor Pearl, a YouTube channel about knitting and other crafts. I'm Nicole and this is episode 8. You can find me on Instagram as Prof Pearl and on Ravelry as Prof Pearl and there's a Ravelry group, Professor Pearl podcast and there is an email, Professor Pearl podcast at gmail.com. Today I am wearing my Christmas sweater that I made or my holiday festive sweater um, that I made this summer and I don't remember what episode I spoke about it on, but it was an earlier pop podcast, perhaps somewhere in the one to three range. Um, and I made this out of Leading Men Fiber Arts yarn that I purchased from my friend Kelly's yarn store, Le Moutin Rouge Knittery. And this is my first day wearing it. And it's just so good and it's really gray out today here in Oregon where I'm filming this from and although it's gray it's a high of 54 today um so I feel like for me it's like perfect short sleeve sweater weather where I feel really comfortable with this in the house and if I'm out I put a cardigan or a jacket over it and yeah, it's, for me, it's like I haven't decorated my house yet for Christmas. I know perhaps some of you have. And so I'm not quite there, but I am in the very festive season where I'm watching Christmas movies and I'm starting to wear the Christmas gear. <laughs> I love this so much and I'm so very glad I made it. This is the Sultana crop by Caitlin Hunter of Boyland Knits and this is my second Soldana I've made and I do have intentions to make a third one for my mother and I'd like to make one for Matilda my three-year-old almost four-year-old she um the pattern's not written for children but I think I think I could modify the motifs and things like that and and I would like to knit another one for myself, perhaps in Halloween colors for next year. So yeah, <laughs> I'd like to knit more of these anyway. So some announcements before I get into finished objects and whips and things like that. So last episode, um, I talked about a new pattern that's out called Professor Pearl Knits. This is the irrigated version. And this is the a picture of kind of a tonal version. It's by Chit Chat Knits, Darcy at Chit Chat Knits. And I have plans on casting on a pair. I was actually hoping to come to this podcast today with a pair guest on, but that didn't happen. But um, so she donated three patterns. So I will announce winners for that. They are, and I put the names on the screen here. Anne Outleski, Jill Jarvis, and Luann Young. And so if you could email me at professorpearlpodcast at gmail.com, I'll get those patterns to you. Um, if you could email me your Ravelry name, if you use Ravelry, and if you don't use Ravelry, email me and we'll figure out how to get the pattern to you. So that's so exciting. I think what I'm going to do, if you are part of the Ravelry group, is start a thread in there for anybody that decides to knit these so I can see what they look like. And it'll be, I guess, like an informal knit along, no dates starting or ending or anything like that, just so I can see them. I have kind of two more kind of like channel announcements before I hop into finish finished objects. And the first kind of channel announcement I want to make is that there will be a love note, love knit along Zoom. So 
if you've been following this channel, thank you. And if you, you probably know about the love note, love knit along. If you're new here, there was a knit along that started in October and goes till December 1st, which is coming up quickly called the Love Note Love Knit Along, where we're knitting Love Note sweaters by Tin Can Knits. And it's been a joy. And I have enjoyed this knit along so much. And although December 1st is the end of the knit along, I know that I'm gonna keep knitting Love Notes for a while. And so <laughs> feel free to keep tagging me. I'm enjoying it so much when I get tagged in a Love Note post. It, it truly brightens my day. And so last episode I had said there, I had started a Ko-Fi account in efforts to hope to get a Zoom Pro account for the channel so we could meet together. And so we had five people make donations, which is incredible. Jillian, Denise, Noreen, Marielle, and Sandra. Thank you so, so much. And basically, um, I think there's like enough for at least five months of a Zoom Pro account for the channel, which I think is so cool. So let's use it. So I've planned a Love Note Love Knit Along, and I'm gonna announce the dates here. If, or the date and times, and if for some reason it doesn't work out with your schedule, I'm just, I'm super sorry about that. Obviously it's hard to please everybody's time zone and schedule, but I will, I do have intentions of doing other Zoom meetups as a group if people are interested and I will announce those. So for the Love Note Love Knit Along, it will, you know, it ends December 1st, although there are ways to just partic participate without finishing your sweater. So no pressure if you don't finish your sweater. But so that seems like the day after that would be nice for us to, to meet. So that's Thursday, December 2nd. And I was torn because what is an ideal knit night time for me is like 7 p.m. or 8 p.m. But then that's really terrible Eastern time because I'm on the West Coast. So I decided to do before dinner time in the Pacific Standard Time. So 4 p.m. my time, which is 6 p.m. Central Time and 7 p.m. Eastern Time. I thought we'd try that. So that's December 2nd. 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 6 p.m. Central Time, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's all that to say. I hope that you can come. And if you are interested in getting like the Zoom meeting link or the, the code to type into the Zoom to join the meeting, I'm gonna be able to provide that to you in two different ways. So I plan on posting it on my Instagram on the day of Thursday, December 2nd. So like in the morning, I'll post it, the information on Instagram. And so you could, if you go follow me as Prof Pearl on Instagram and you could get that information. If you don't use Instagram, you can email me, professorpearlpodcast at gmail.com and I will just take your email and put it in a special folder. And when it's time, when it's close to the meeting date, I will send out that email with all the information. And also on December 2nd in the morning, I will post in the chatter thread, I will make a post with the meeting invite information in Ravelry. So if you don't use Ravelry or Instagram, email me or anyway, so hopefully those ways will help you get the information to attend the Zoom. And you don't, you can still come to the Zoom if you don't have your sweater finished. If you're still working on your sweater, come. If you're casting on a love note, come. And I just thought it would be fun for us to get to meet each other. I'm thinking the length of the Zoom will be about an hour. And what would be ideal is that everybody could share their sweater that they're working on or wearing or share their love note like and it will not be recorded or posted on YouTube it'll just be an event for us so yeah let me know if you plan on coming I'd love to know I really hope this works out because it'll be so fun for 
need to have like a real knit night like with everybody. Um, I've really enjoyed YouTube lives. Just side note, thank you so much for everybody that came to the YouTube live. I had a YouTube live love note knit party and on Sunday, I think this past Sunday and it's my second YouTube live. And each time I've done a YouTube live, I'm kind of nervous that like nobody will come or something like this. And both times lots of people have come and it's been such a rewarding experience to get to interact through the chat. And so that's so much fun. I really just can't imagine how much fun Zoom's gonna be. So thank you so much for the people that donated Zoom to this channel and yeah, I'm just really excited for us to meet up and share our love notes. So please come. <laughs> um, okay. And the next kind of channel thing too is that the last video I have uploaded on my channel was an interview with Karen, the owner of Naughty Lamb, which is a yarn store out by me. And so it's sort of a vlog slash interview kind of a little reflection here about sweaters I've made from there. And I really, I've made three of these videos now. Um, one's called Meet the Knitting Cup, which was a yarn store in Texas, Georgetown, Texas. The other one was Meet Wild Hand, which is a yarn store in Philadelphia. And then there's Meet Naughty Lamb, which is a yarn store in Forest Grove, Oregon, which is about a half hour from me. And I have to say of all the videos I've created, like those are my favorite. I get so much joy out of like learning about those yarn stores more and making a video about them. I just, it's been pure joy. So now I'm going to transition to talking about my finished objects. I have two finished objects today. The first finished object is a Winnie the Pooh 100 Acre Woods Lego set. And I will insert a picture is somewhere here <laughs> or maybe a couple of pictures and I don't know I'm always like is Lego uh, are Legos a craft like can I share that on this channel and then I'm like it's my channel I can call it a craft I actually got this Lego set for my birthday which was in August and life got in the way of it and I wasn't able to do it and unfortunately Matilda and I we got a cold and luckily it wasn't COVID. We were both tested for it and we recovered really quickly from our cold and the results for COVID came back negative. So um, we didn't have COVID and we recovered quickly from our cold. So it's all good things, but we were like at home kind of like, you know, isolating and recovering and we played a ton of Legos and that included putting together this kit, which was like almost 1300 pieces and Matilda's three going on four. She'll be four end of this month. And so I had to like be very patient <laughs> with um, like the pieces and helping her and things that we can do really quickly as adults take a tiny human much longer to do. And, but it was so fun. And it's like such a good bonding experience. And actually on that 100 acre wood Lego set, Matilda did every single leaf on that tree. And I was actually really grateful for that because that was the last part of the Lego set was putting together the leaves. And I was feeling kind of like, oh, I don't know if I want to do the <laughs> the leaves. And Matilda asked if she could do all of them. And so it's not fully my own finished object. It's a collective finished object, but I'm really proud of it. And it, it took us several days to do and um, many hours and it was super fun. And my next finished object is knitting. <laughs> and it's a pair of socks and one sock is dry and the other sock is still wet. So this is the dry sock and this is the wet sock. Okay, the reason why one is dry and one is wet is as soon as I finished one sock and I knit my socks one at a time, I was so excited, I blocked it right away. And so this one had time to dry. And then this one I just finished yesterday and so it's blocking. So I'm going to set that down since it's wet. But I just wanted to show you I did finish a whole pair of socks since the last podcast. Podcast, And I'm a slow sock knitter, so that's a huge accomplishment for me. These are the Kusi Hula socks. 
which is Finnish for like a festa party, a Christmas party, a spruce party, kind of like a vintage, imagine vintage Christmas here. And the designer is Ania, Anina from Annie Hootie Knits. And I think these are darling. So these are test knit. And as soon as they are out, and I don't know, maybe they're even out right now, I will post it on my Instagram. So if you follow me, uh, Prof Pearl on Instagram, I will post this in my stories and on my grid. Or go follow Annie Hootie. I'm sure she'll post Annie Hootie Knits. Um, I'm sure she'll post when they're out. And they're so cute. So I, about test knitting. So for me with test knitting, kind of my philosophy about it is I should do it exactly as written. So I, the heel's a little bit different than what I normally do and the toe's a little bit different than what I normally do, but I just felt like I should do that since I was test knitting. And I learned some things from that too. Um, for instance, one thing I learned, and it seems so obvious, but I just never thought about it. When I make a slip stitched heel like this, I always do the slipping on the knit side. And with this pattern, we did that on the purl side. And so that was new. But what was kind of cool for me to try that is I discovered that that actually kind of made these lines pop out more for me. So that was really fascinating. And Anina in her pattern gives some tips. And so one of the tips was how on the SSK side to have this be kind of cleaned up this gusset part. And so I learned something from testing that way. And so the toe is a little bit more rounded than I normally do, but I love it. So I'm just exceptionally proud that it is not even December yet and I have a brand new Christmas sweater and new Christmas socks to wear and I have never been in this position where I've entered December with like Christmas things like this done so it just feels it just feels like it just feels really amazing <laughs> so I love these um let me tell you about the yarn so this is stress knits yarn the main color here in the colorway called Christmas Wrapping. And last year, I, in 2020, got an advent from Stress Knits and there was a final skein and that was Christmas Wrapping. And I had intentions to knit a, a, textured, a, a textured sock pattern with it, but I ended up using it for this test knit and I'm glad I did. Then I went through my stash and I picked out these colors. And so the dark green and the pink are Lady Men Fiber Arts colors. I know the pink was called Sangria. I don't remember what the dark green color was called. It was something about a forest, but I'll link it below. And, and then these two colors here were Cold Brew and Bottle Brush Tree from Stress Nets as well, from the advent last year. And I just think it's neat I, that, especially that my Santa hats are a little pink, a little red, just like Sangria. And yeah, I really like that. So, oh, on this side, I did use a Progress Keeper that I've recently purchased. I, it was made available through Lock and Lou. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. I'll link that here. I'll link it below and also put the name here. She made these progress keepers for sock miss. And so I'm a huge Disney fan. And so it's the Disney Christmas wreath. And this is part of Nitty Natty's sock miss. It's coming up November 26, but I started using it early because my sock miss, I guess, started early <laughs> for testing. So yeah, I think these would be a great pattern to do if you're doing any kind of sock miss. Um, I know that We Share Needles, Kristen and Maddie are hosting a, it was something really cute and now I'm sad that I don't remember what it was, but it was like um, maybe a Jingle Bell sock along. I don't know if I'm, I'll get the correct hashtag and make sure that I put it here. But I think these would be a cool pattern to do for that too. Okay. I know that I'm going on and on about these socks, but I'm gonna continue to do for one last thing. 
Look at all the yarn I have left over. <laughs> so I have a ton of the sangria and this look. Actually, the colors are here. Sangria and Shadows in the Trees are the Leave and Fiber Arts colors. And a ton of cold brew. Basically, I'm, because I was testing, I was weighing everything before and after to know like how much she was taking to use. It did not take very much yarn at all um, for the color work. So it would be a great scrappy project if you had it. But just for the um, bottle brush tree, I used two grams for one sock. Well, I guess I used 3.8 grams. The bottle brush tree, I only used 3.8 grams. For cold brew, the brown, I only used for both socks, 2.5 grams. And for the dark green, I only used 7.9 grams. And for the pink, I only used 3.9 grams for all. So I'm sharing that to say that there's enough left over to do a whole nother sock. And then for the bottom part of the sanitary, I use this mohair. So this whole color part of the sock, I could do a whole nother set of socks and have plenty. And I was hoping then this would be enough for a full skein um, to do another pair and it normally would have been but this was a smaller full skein. I weighed it to begin with and it was less than 90 grams and normally like a whole skein of yarn like fingering like this is 100 so it was a smaller skein. I don't I think it's kind of unusual for a skein of yarn to be that like underweight but because of that there's not normally there's enough left over to do Normally there'd be enough left over from a full skein to do a second set, but this isn't enough. So that's the pickle. But all this would be great. I also think you could put all these colors together with the Christmas tree wrapping instead of the bottle brush tree. And that, I think the trees would pop out more than mine did. And I think that would look really good. So I'm just sharing that because I actually would love to share this with one of the viewers. Um, so if you are interested, I, I have a different giveaway for this episode planned, but if you're interested in my leftovers, maybe just comment below. And if anybody's interested, I'll just reply to your comment and then we can figure out how to get this to you. Um, I don't know if anybody would be interested in my leftovers, but I just know that I am not going to knit a second pair of these in this colorway. Not that they weren't a joy, they were an absolute joy. It's just like I have so many other Christmas plans that I would love to, I would love for somebody to participate in a Christmas no long. And yeah, maybe you have like a pale pink yarn in your stash or a pale mint in your stash and like you could integrate this in. Um, let me know if you're interested and I'll reply back and figure that out. Oh, and unfortunately, because of shipping costs, I really need it to be somebody in the US um, that replies that wants it. And I, and I don't normally plan on doing that kind of restriction forever, but I actually recently went to mail some stitch markers to, to somebody in Australia and was $70 to mail to trackers until things kind of open up there again. So, um, yeah. <laughs> so, okay. As I was organizing what I was going to talk about for works in progress today, I realized that I don't have as many whips as I think I do and that I... Like what I have is doable to get done, but for some reason, I have been sort of feeling overwhelmed by my works in progress. But I think it's a little silly because, well, you'll see, there, there's not that many. <laughs> so since the last podcast, I have worked on my love note. This is my fifth love note. I don't know if you hear a dog barking right now, but my neighbor has a dog named Randall from, he's named after the show, This Is Us, and he's really cute. He's a 
golden retriever and he doesn't normally bark and so I don't know why he's barking but he's kind of been barking all day and I was really intending on um podcasting but I, I hope it's not bothering you um yeah it's really unusual for him to bark like this um anyway so here it is it's really lightweight I'm knitting it out of Rowan Alpaca Classic. I purchased this from Les Moutons Rouge Knittery, my friend Kelly Jarn's store. And pros about this yarn. I'm loving it. It's soft and it's really lightweight. And yeah, the con is that it comes in these little 25 gram balls. And so I'm on my fourth ball already and I've hardly knit any of the sweater. <laughs> and it just feels like I'm like eating through the yarn, but I'm like, this is how far I would be if I was using one skein of fingering held with mohair at this point, probably. So it'll be all right. Oh, I just dropped some stitches. Oh, well, I'll just pick it up later. <laughs> I drop stitches all the time. <laughs> I think this is why people put end stoppers on their, on their stuff. My husband actually teases me all the time because I just like, he teases me because he's a knitter, just so I know too. He teases me that the reason why I'm good at picking up stitches is because I drop them all the time. <laughs> Which is, there's probably some truth in that. <laughs> I shared this work in progress and a bit more on my Love Note Love Live that I just did on Sunday, so I won't go too into depth on it, but I did, since it's my fifth one, my fifth Love Note, I decided to spice it up and I changed the lace pattern here. Let's see. I love the lace pattern that I substituted it, substituted. I think it's like a nice blend of lace and texture. It's called the pistachio stitch. If anybody's interested, you can search it. And yeah, basically the love note, love, the love note pattern, the lace is a 12 stitch repeat. And so I, when I was deciding how to replace the lace, I just thought, what are factors of 12 and you know, there's several, two, three, four, six, obviously 12, um, and one. <laughs> but I knew that I wanted to do something that was either going to be a two, three, four, or six repeat. And this stitch is a four stitch repeat. And anyway, I was so excited to switch out the lace that I actually, when I started this and knit through the whole thing, it turned out really small. And then I counted the stitch and I, stitches and I realized I forgot an increase row because I was just so excited to start this. So <laughs> I had to rip it back and start over, which is fine. But yeah, so that's, I'm still loving it. And actually I want to knit a, a faded, a faded love note. There's two people I know that have done faded love notes and I'm obsessed with them. One is Maddie from We Sure Needles. She's knitting a no lace version fade love note. And I think it's so cool and I wanna do one for my stash and I totally good. I've got the yarn ready to go. And somebody have on Instagram, I think the handle is all things Caleb. And Caleb's love note is lace but then has a fade, but not like a very dramatic fade. Like the fade kind of happens at the bottom of the sleeves. Why am I not done a faded love note? So I need to, anyway, I'm digressing to like dream knits or something. I need to stay here focused on the whips. Okay, so on November 1st, I decided to randomly do like a mini advent situation for myself. Here's what happened. Last Christmas on with my mom, so Christmas 2020, my mom gifted me this Malintosh advent that's like 12 days of Christmas, which is meant to be started 
I mean, you can use it however you want, like 12 days before Christmas, but the 12 days of Christmas technically start on Christmas day and go 12 days later. And so I was going to start it then, but we travel for Christmas and things are busy. And so I didn't do it. And then when we were home in January, back in Oregon, I mean, I was like, well, um, I wasn't feeling like Christmas knitting anymore. And so then I thought, oh, I'll save it for next year. Then I was thinking about my plans for Christmas this year. And I feel like they're kind of over ambitious, <laughs> like all of my plans tend to be. And I was like, I'm probably not gonna have time for this in December. So I decided to start this November 1st. And then it came with a couple patterns you could do. And I was initially gonna use those, but I just really got it in my heart, like my soul that I really wanted to learn to crochet granny squares. I love the look of a granny square and granny square stripes. And so I decided for November 1st to November 12th, I would try to crochet a granny square a day. And I actually kept my little leftover yarns. I put them back in here so I could sh like remember what days they are. But I'm thinking I should take them out maybe you now that I've gotten here. But Oh, the sun's coming out a little bit. Okay, so I will show you my granny squares. And I'm really proud of this because I'm not, I'm a novice crocheter. So you crochet like this maybe not a big deal to you but this was so exciting to me i learned this is my very first gray square right here and this took three attempts like i did it and i tore it out and did it again tore it out and i'm pretty sure it took me like two hours to do which is what it is <laughs> so that's my first granny square and so initially i was going to just try to crochet as much as I could out of one color, but then I realized that these take me long because I'm a slow crocheter and I'm new at this. So then I, after day one of thinking that, I decided just to do one square each day and then I want to go through the days again. So here's this black one. This is cream, a gray, dark green. I loved this color. I'll link the tutorial I used from YouTube below. I think it was called like a salad granny square or something. It was a really good tutorial for somebody like me that's not um, familiar with crochet. It's dark purple. So I love this. I don't know, this is Malintosh Light. I don't know if a very light, smooth, silky fingering weight was like the best thing to start crocheting on, but as somebody knew, but I love it. And when I started crocheting these, like initially I thought I want some kind of granny square vest. And I started to like look on Ravelry for granny square vests and I wasn't like seeing anything that was like what I want. And so then I ended up going to just the Google search engine and I came across, and I'll insert the picture somewhere here, a picture of Paul, McCart Paul McCartney wearing a gray square vest. And this is what I want. Now his vest has like these multicolored gray squares and that's not the look I want today. I mean, I wouldn't be opposed to that for another gray square vest someday, but I, for this vest, I want a very, I want some kind of color that's gonna be like cohesive to bring everything in. So I want some squares in that, and I want like the outline in that color, but I'm gonna use up my, mal my Malintosh mini skeins and make these little. I'm thinking, holding this up to me, that so I, I held these up to me i'm five granny squares wide five of my granny squares wide and so i think my vest i'm going to do like three on this side and then three on this side and then then the border and it'll give me some positive ease so i'm really 
this is a strange thing I want to make, but I, it's not strange for me. I think I'm going to love it. And I love granny square blankets, granny square stripes. I, there's a sweater called the granny go round crochet sweater. So nice. Oh, so in this, I hadn't opened up these ones down here, which were like notions. There were some cocoa knits, stitch markers that were triangular shaped, which was cute. There was a sticker, like a vinyl sticker for like your mug or something. And then it came with like a pin that said 12 days of mad tosh here. And so anyway, I'm really excited about it. And okay, so then after I finished my Kusi Hula socks yesterday, I was like, okay, I think part of the reason why I'm feeling a little stressed out about my whips is I'm still not done my Christmas sweater that I started in July. So I started a Christmas sweater called the Yule Grand sweater this past July. And it, I got a little tired of working on it. It's a little fiddly of a sweater for me. Um, it was, it was kind of knit in pieces and then in the round and there was a lot of purling and so I just got tired of it and I set it aside and I don't feel bad ever about putting the project to the side for a bit and I usually come back to it and if I don't I can tear it out. <clears throat> so just a refresher if you watch this channel, this is the sweater if you don't, this is the sweater that I started this summer and there's a Christmas tree here. This looks like reverse stockinette and this really cool kind of turtleneck that's like a mock turtle it's kind of like a mock turtleneck i guess there's this fun detail on the, the sleeve here i don't know if you can see that and so last night i picked up the stitches all i have left is the two sleeves so last night i picked up the stitches on the sleeve and was watching a Christmas movie with Kyle after Matilda went to bed called Holiday, I think. And in that time I got this done here. These are short rows. I did modify the pattern. The pattern suggests doing wrap and turns and I'm doing German short rows. And if you're following a pattern with counts exactly, it does kind of put things off a little bit because with a German short row, like say there's four stitches, like if you're knitting these stitches and this is wrap and turn this stitch, like you have to keep in mind that when you are knitting, like if it says knit three, wrap and turn, that's four stitches. But if you're doing German short, short rows, you would knit these, you would not knit three and then wrap and turn, you would knit four and then wrap and turn. Um, I don't know if that makes any sense. That might not make any sense, but if you're familiar with wrap and turns and German short rows, maybe that does make sense. <laughs> anyway, um, this is, the colorway is Judy Mint, Judy's Mint. It's dyed by my friend Kelly. She's got her own yarn line at, called Red Sheep Fibers, I think, or Red Sheep Yarn. She sells it at her store, in Moutin Rouge. And it's so interesting knitting this sweater at the same time as this, because this is a worsted superwash, and this is a DK, like it's not superwash. This is so light compared to this. I love superwash yarn in the sense that like, especially from indie dyers, like you get like the coolest yarn, but it is just for worsted weight, it's just, a, it's a heavier sweater. It'll be fine and that it'll be really cozy and I'll enjoy wearing it, but it's just so fascinating comparing the two weights of these. Okay. So my last whip is a sewing whip. I did show a sewing whip last episode and that one I've had trouble with. So I'm just, it's in the kind of the timeout corner for right now. And so instead, I started another, I started another sewing project. And for me, my sewing life is 
very slow. It is like, there's slow fashion and then there's like my slow fashion, which is the slow, slow, slow fashion. <laughs> and we're gonna see here. This bag has these 15 gallon bags. Like I just put all my stuff in it. Okay. So this is a Vogue pattern that is, I don't think it's in print anymore. I'll show you the, it's pattern 1523 from Vogue Attitudes International. I'm doing view B, let's see here. I'm doing this view here. Um, and actually, I have a muslin of it so I can show you. It still has pins in it and stuff. I'll put it over my sweater. This should look great. This is probably a bad decision here. So this is the muslin of the sweater. I mean, of the dress. So these pockets here I'm sewing this in a much larger size than I would like buy at the store I don't know if that may if that's normal for sewing or not but it's the size I think that will give you some positive V's and I love to wear a dress with positive V's particularly while teaching and it's got pockets, so I'm imagining I can put my dry erase markers in here and things like this. Okay. So I actually did not sew that muslin. <laughs> I did not sew this muslin. So I have a friend who's maybe one of my most eccentric friends I have. Is not on social media, so you can't find her on social media. Um, she sews all of her own clothes and they're beautiful. And she also has a lot of um, opinions about sewing that are like really helpful for me to learn like why she feels that way and things like that. And so anyway, I mean, she, I sewed, I showed her a dress I wanted to make and she didn't like the dress that I wanted to make for my, so she's like, I'm gonna sew you this dress that I think would you'd like better in the muslin. And so she actually came with two muslins that she had made and she was right about this dress being perhaps better than the other dress I had picked out. Um, and so we tried on the muslin and I liked it. And so then that's how we decided on the size. And she's the one who actually gifted me this pattern. So then we went fabric shopping at there's a store out here that's a Pendleton Mill End store. So Pendleton, if you're familiar with them, I have some, I have two Pendleton blankets. They just make incredible fabric and wool products. But out here in Oregon, there's actually a city Pendleton. And in the Portland area, there's a Pendleton um, Mill End store where they sell the Mill Ends of the fabric. And so we went there. And even still, some of the time, some of the fabric can still be expensive. And I had found the fabric that I wanted to make this dress out of. And I was getting ready to check out and she was like, no, no, I have that fabric and I will just give it to you. Like not that exact fabric, but like a very similar wool fabric. And so anyway, she had me over to her house and she, owns and grows cherries. Like she owns a cherry orchard and grows cherries. And on her farm, there's an old farmhouse that she no longer lives in. But that house is kind of like her sewing house. And so she um, had me over there and showed me the fabric and it was wonderful. Here's a little bit of it. So it's like a, a tropical weight wool. And 
And so that's what's in here. It's all the pieces for this dress cut out. I definitely am going to pull them out and show you, but. And so she had me over for like the whole day. And I think she thought, because she's a very fast sewist. So I think she thought that she and I would sew together and I would just start and complete this dress all in one day. But it basically took me the entire day to understand the directions and to cut out the pieces. But even just cutting out pieces with her, I learned out a lot. I learned a ton about um, grain line and reading pattern pieces. And I have been all like self-taught sewing up to this point, but it felt like I was getting like a little sewing class with her. And yeah, so it was great. And what I just feel really blessed, like in terms of like having a friend like that that can help me a little bit learn something new and I really really feel thankful for the gift of the pattern and the fabric it's just yeah I feel really really blessed about that mm -hmm. so we will see how the follow through on sewing the pieces together I, I think this is going to be a long-term project for me it took me quite a long time to sew a dress for Matilda which I've shown on this podcast before I just so very slow partly is i have to unpick things so the shirt that i showed last episode i've had to unpick the seams on it like three times because it's like a slippery fabric and i have a lot to learn in dealing with that and so sewing does not come as naturally to me as knitting does and i think it's just because it's something i'm learning as an adult, whereas I've knit since childhood, but it's also humbling to have that experience of learning something new as an adult because it helps me appreciate adults that learn how to knit or learn something new. I just, yeah, I think it's easier to learn things as a child. And so my hope is that as Matilda grows up, she'll want to learn some kind of craft from me. I don't know whether it'll be knitting or crochet or sewing, but maybe she'll want to learn something from me. And I hope that's something we can like do together anyway <laughs> all right as i transition into dream knitting i want to talk about an upcoming knit along like make an upcoming knit along announcement because in a way it's like dream knitting in addition to being an announcement but i want to do it earlier in the podcast I kind of hinted towards a books and beret knit along last podcast, but it was so long. I have no idea if any, like some people made it to the end. They commented and you're a treasure, but not everybody did. So I'm sure of it. <laughs> so here's a beret from my childhood. My mom made it. I remember wearing this as a child and I haven't worn it since being a child, but I'm going to wear it now. <laughs> I think, I think berets are like I mean, this is a total ladies, total ladies vibe here. Um, I actually can't believe this actually fits my head because it's my childhood bray. I actually brought this from my childhood home when I went to it in October in Illinois. I brought it home for Matilda and it actually fits her head. It fits Matilda loosely, but it fits her. So it's kind of funny that it can fit mine. Um, okay, so books and berets. New knit along. Basically, after hosting the Love No Love Knit Along, I learned about myself that I love hosting knit alongs. And, well, I mean, I loved hosting the Love No Love Knit Along. Maybe I will love hosting a second knit along. And I want to explore that. And I, it was just a joy, the Love No Love Knit Along. So for the next knit along, I was thinking about entering January. 2022 and how sometimes we need a palette cleanser like something that we can do for ourselves and make and something that is also like for us like a way to because sometimes in December we're like doing so much for other people that it can be really nice to do something for ourselves in January and I know that personally I will be completing a large project in December or maybe two large projects in December. So I was thinking in January, a smaller project, like a beret would be nice. <laughs> okay, so books and berets. 
I'm going to make a separate video about it for this channel, but just in case you don't watch it, I'll provide some details here. The Books and Beret Nail Along will, last, will start on January 9th, 2022, and will go to February 20th, 2022. So I am coming to you early about it, and that's because I want you to have time to get your materials or think about it or something to look forward to the new year. And so the Books and Berets Nail Along will be simple um, in the sense that any book and any beret can be part of the make along. It's not a knit along, it's gonna be a make along. Because if you crochet and you wanna crochet a beret, that should be part of this. So any craft that makes a beret and any beret and any book, you can participate. And just like the love note knit along, you can participate in Ravelry and on Instagram. I am going to be knitting a Jacqueline Beret from Clinton Hill Cashmere, and I'm very thrilled about that. And I will also be reading a book called Real Men Knit. And so I just wanted to share those things in case you want to do those things too. And I have some really exciting news. <laughs> And the really exciting news is that this Real Men Knit book is available on Shelby and the Bookstore. Now, I will put Shelby's handle here. And she has Shelby and the Bookstore, her website, and the, her, she's a, like a small business owner, like a small bookstore, if you will, online. And she really amplifies black authors, which I think is just incredible to do. And just, I get, I've learned so much from her content. She has a YouTube channel as well that I'll link below and her Instagram. And, and I've been so inspired too by her content that I just think if you're interested in some booktube or bookstagram, like she's a good fun one to, to follow. I think I, you could fall down the rabbit hole of bookstagram and booktube, if you will, just like you can with knitting. And so I try to be selective in my books, bookstagram and booktube time because like knitting is my main hobby. And But Shelby's one of the ones I follow and I really enjoy it. And, and anyway, of course, with this book, you can read any book for the books and berets and along. And I'm imagining like a finished object picture where you know maybe there's a flat lay with your beret in your book, or maybe there's some kind of picture where you're like wearing your beret with your book. I can just see that being like really fun. Despite that, like I have to pick a book if I, we want to have a Zoom session, right? Like we have like to talk about. And so I decided to pick this book and it is available on Shelby's website. Of course, you can get the book from your library or from Amazon. But I'm kind of like, personally, if I have a choice to buy something not on Amazon, I personally would rather support small businesses than Amazon. Seriously, I mean, I understand Amazon Prime is nice, but it's also really nice to support local bookstores or small business owners. And so anyway, I would love it if you would support Shelby. And if you have a choice, get the book from her instead of Amazon. Now, that's why I'm announcing it early because shipping right now, I don't know if you're experiencing this, but shipping is wild. So I thought if I announced it now and you wanted to buy it from Shelby, that would give you some time to get it shipped in plenty of time to get the book by January. And Shelby has offered to lead a book discussion for us on Zoom. And I already have the details on that, which are the book discussion will be on February 21st at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, which is 6 p.m. Central Standard Time and 7 p.m. Eastern Time. And yeah, so she's, and she's really good at leading book discussions. She does it regularly. She does it on her Instagram and she also has like a Patreon. And so anyway, 
And it's a book about knitting, so I thought that would be fun. It's definitely out of my comfort zone of normal reads because I think I was reading online, it is listed as a fiction romance. Although when I was reading the plot, like I didn't really understand necessarily how it was a romance yet, but <laughs> and it has fun discussion questions and it involves knitting and men who knit and my husband's a knitter. I'm just really excited about it. I should ask him if he wants to participate in this. We'll see. Um, anyway, so I just think it's a really big honor that Shelby's offered to lead a Zoom a Zoom night. And so I was imagining us showing up to the Zoom night, which is the day after when the knit along ends or the make along ends. And we could be wearing our berets and discussing the book and maybe we could take like a you take a picture of a screen maybe we could take a picture of all of us wearing our berets I think it would be really fun so anyway I know there was a lot of positive sub comments in support of this make-along coming up some people said like I don't know if berets are for me and I totally understand although I think berets are for everybody <laughs> And I mean, maybe not with my like 90s style child beret that I'm wearing right now, but, <laughs> um, and then some people were like, well, I don't know. It depends on the book you pick. And that's why I just thought like anybody can participate in the make along with any book or any beret pattern. But of course I wanted to pick a book to kind of have as like the the focal point of the make along and for us to talk about. And if you buy your book from Shelby, I think she's gonna, maybe you can put a note in the comments that it's for this make along. She said she could put a sticker on it. And I was thinking when we take our pictures and finished objects that could get you a second entry in Ravelry. And similarly, um, I'll have a, extra entry for people that knit the Jacqueline beret from Clinton Hill cashmere. And anyway, I'll have more videos about that coming up here on the channel. So be on the lookout for that. I'm really excited about it. I feel like I have a lot of dream knitting to discuss today. So buckle up. <laughs> so the first dream knitting is my stress knits advent arrived. I haven't peaked. It's been really hard. It's been like very challenging to not peek at this, but this is my advent. And I plan, so basically, I'm not sure how I found out that, that Maddie from We Share Needles podcast, her friend Kristen, they, they do this podcast together, gifted her stress knits advent like how amusing is that and so I think I must have found out from messaging her or watching their podcast I don't know but somehow she and I were talking about it and we decided that we would do something together like a little make along with just like the two of us we decided on doing the Radvent cardigan by Amba O'Brien and it's a really cool construction knit sleeve to sleeve, looks very 80s. And so because of that, we needed a main color because it has a main color for the cuffs and the banding, which it comes with the main skein, but that could like, that's the first thing you knit and you're supposed to open that December 25th. So we decided to try to get stress knits perfectly adequate. Maddie, I put on her Instagram, I request asking if anybody would be willing to sell it from their stash. And I looked through Ravelry for anybody that was selling it. And I bought, there was one available that was trade or sell. And so I bought from trade or sell on Ravelry. And it, what they were selling was like this kit. Must have been like, it's been a kit she was selling at some point that has these really cute minis, which are my jam and pillow mint. And so I'm gonna use this perfectly adequate as the cuff and the banding. Now, of course I have gray yarn in my stash I could have used, but I wanted it to be like fully stress knits. <laughs> and 
and I knew Stacy from Stress Sense has a very clear color aesthetic that I just thought the probability of this gray looking good with it would be strong. The only thing I'm unsure about is whether or not I should do mohair with it. So the cardigan, you can do either just fingering or mohair. I think Maddie plans on doing it without mohair, which made me want to do it without mohair so that I could have a sweater that like matched hers exactly. Like how cool is that? My internet friend I have a matching sweater with. But if I like, you should know yourself and what you want. And there's like this part of me that like really wants mohair because I like everything with mohair better. <laughs> I'm like, would I wear something without mohair? Like, I don't know. <laughs> and I also think it would give it a slightly larger gauge and maybe I could knit it like faster. I don't know. If you know the Radvent cardigan, let me know which one you like better. If you like it with fingering better or with mohair. I know it's a personal preference, but I just really like hearing your thoughts. Next dream knitting is a sweater that I have been like swooning over for a bit now, which is the Moody Hue from the Bluebird box. So Anna from the Bluebird box. I actually almost applied to test knit the sweater, but I didn't apply to test knit it because at the time that there was testing going on, I think I'd only done one test knit or something in my life. I've done three test knits now total, but I, I think with the time of the testing, I call, I just was unsure if I could do a sweater for a test knit. Now I feel more confident that I've done smaller things that I could apply for a sweater test, but um, I just remember feeling unsure when the test went out, but I really liked it. And then her sweater was released, the Moody, the Moody Hue, and there was kits from Ginger Snaps sold. And I just was like, oh, I've got so much yarn, I should use it for my stash. And I just kind of regret not buying one of those Moody Hue kits because they were just really 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 nice so that's how i feel about that sweater and then anna reached out to me surprisingly and said that she was watching my channel and i was like what just honored and that she wanted to donate to love note love knit along a bundle of the moody hue sweater with the hat that matches it and I forget the name of the hat which is why I'm looking down called Shaded Spectrum and I just think it's so cool when designers do and not a lot of designers do this um actually I only Tim Kinnitz does this and, and then Anna I don't let me know if you know of other designers that do this where they have a hat that goes with the sweater and the reason why I think that's so cool is you can knit the hat like a gauge swatch and then knit your sweater I think it's so cool so that bundle is a prize for the Love Note Love Nail Long now. And I'm just like, that's so cool. So excited. But then for everybody that's watching today, or like anytime you watch this, there's a discount code ProfPearl30. I'll put the code here. Just 30% off on any of her patterns until December 15th. So I'm going to use that discount code. I'm going to personally use that discount code too, because she has a, um, I forget the name of the, I was looking for my phone. I'm using it to record. <laughs> I forget the name of the sweater, but she's got this, this children's cardigan. I'll put a picture of it here. I love it too. Like those are my, like, she has a lot of cool designs, but those are my like favorite ones right now. And yeah, so thank you, Anna. That's so, so sweet. And Stephanie Dream Knitting, I don't know when I'll knit it, but I do know it's like one of those sweaters that's on my radar. I think my, I do think it's a sweater you could pull from your stash from, and this, if you have that weight in your stash, I don't have that, a lot of that weight in the stash for the yoke, so I need to buy a kit for it or buy the yarn. Um, so I think that's kind of my hold up right now is that, is actually like deciding on that. Should have did it when Ginger Snap had like kits up on their website. I don't know if they do or not anymore, but I'll link Ginger Snap below because they have really cool yarn that I think would look really good with that sweater as well. Okay, my other dream knitting is something that I won. I won a prize on Instagram. What? 
You just arrived this week and it really made my day. So there's Noelle from Charmed and Dangerous had a giveaway in collaboration with Murray and Company Wool Goods. And I've always wanted a skein of this, like this kind of yarn. I've seen Murray, Murray and Company Wool Goods at Nani Lamb, a local yarn store to me. And I follow her on Instagram and I really love her yarn. I've always wanted one of these skeins. So when there was a giveaway, I was like, of course I'm gonna like comment. And this colorway is called Witch's Cottage. And then with it, and then Noelle from Charm and Dangerous, she makes these really, really, really cute charms. And this is a charm or a progress keeper that goes with the yarn. It's like this cottage. Maybe I'll put it on this yarn to hold up. It goes so cute together and it's got major, like, it just screams fall to me. Like, it's just very fall. Which is why I'm calling it Dream Knitting for next fall. I think this year I've been in a very, like, seasonal sock mood. I've knit, like, a pencil socks for the start of school, school year. I knit Halloween socks. I've knit Christmas socks now. And I'm in the Christmas sock spirit right now where my next socks, I want them to be Christmassy. And so um, I just think I want to save this for September or October or November next year. Oh, I just think it's so good. So um, it really made my day to get that in the mail. It's so cute. Okay, I want to talk about gift knitting. I want to first share my philosophy about gift knitting as Christmas is upon us and share like what my favorite kind of like gifts to knit are. So I think my philosophy on gift knitting is it should be pressure free personally. I know some people like knit so many gifts for everybody in their family and I don't necessarily do that. I have knit things for people. I don't try to knit every person in my family something. I try to maybe pick a person each year or a couple of people each year to focus on. And it's just what I personally like to do. Um, I also, for gift knitting, I want it to bring me joy. So, like I want to enjoy knitting it. So my favorite thing to do personally with gift knitting is to knit smaller. Since I tend to be more of a garment knitter and big project knitter, I, during Christmas season, get a lot of joy out of knitting people things out of bulky or so, super bulky yarn. And I think I get joy out of it because I don't normally do it. And so I save that sort of for my December knitting. And so last year I knit my sister-in-law a cowl out of super bulky yarn. I crocheted out of bulky yarn, like some like scrunchies for my nieces. So like small, small bulky products. So it's something I can finish while watching a Hallmark Christmas movie or something like that. And that's something that gives me a lot of joy to do. And yeah. So Last year, I ended up, for my mother-in-law, knitting her a sweater out of super bulky yarn. And I knit it in like two days. And so I wanted to show you some sweaters I have knit myself that are, are out of super bulky yarn. Mm. So two sweaters I've made for myself out of super bulky yarn are by Loopy Mango. the it's called mohair so soft so this hot pink one which is short sleeves with a puff sleeve it is the puff sleeve top this one was knit in four pieces a front a back and then the sleeves and then seamed together it 
goes by like very, very fast. Like I, I honestly think you can hit this in a day if you want it. Like if you have like a long movie or something like that. And I like to style it with like a long button up shirt underneath. One year for Christmas, I don't remember. I think it was last year, maybe the year before. My husband bought me a sweaters quantity of this gray by Luffy Mango. What color is this dark secret? And I knit a sweater called the Kinnikin Cardigan by Tara Lynn Morrison. And this is my favorite cardigan I own and I've knit, even though I knit it really quickly. It is so warm. Like, it's light, it, but it's so warm. It, like, what is the content in here? It is 47% super kid mohair and 50% extra fine merino. So that short sleeve sweater I think you can knit in a night. And this sweater, I definitely knit in less than a week. And the construction is so interesting. I won't give the details away because it's a paid for pattern, but you do something special here in the collar that makes this collar structured. And then you knit the rest of it at a looser, lighter gauge. And I love this cardigan so much. I love to wear this cardigan with like a t-shirt underneath it. And the sleeves are like poofy. I just feel very sophisticated when I wear it. Not in this styling with a Christmas sweater and then a mohair sweater over the top, but I I love this so much. I, and it's so warm, I actually can wear it like a jacket. Because I knit this in a week and it wasn't like even monogamous knitting in a week, I decided to knit this exact sweater for my mother-in-law, but I didn't do it in mohair because mohair is not everybody's thing actually some people find mohair itchy i think it's super soft this does shed a little bit um because it's natural fiber and but that doesn't bother me but it could bother somebody that's not into fiber <laughs> so i yeah so i decided to knit hers out of more of a budget yarn and I'm trying to remember what yarn I used, I don't even remember, but I basically found a budget yarn at my local yarn store and knit her one of these in, I don't even know how fast, but it was very quickly. I mean, I, I think you're using like maybe size 13, 15 needles or something on it, US. And um, yeah, that's so good. So if you wanted to knit something, oh, I guess what I wanted to say is if you wanted to knit a garment for somebody, I actually think this is a really good garment to knit because there's a lot of positive ease and also like shaping, like it matters, but it doesn't really matter that much for the sweater. Like it, there's grace in the sizing of it. And yeah, so I do think that this would be a good garment to knit for somebody. I think I knit hers a little longer because she seemed like somebody that wouldn't necessarily want like the cropped cardigan, but and Knit Picks has some super bulky, I was going like this because there's mohair floating around. Knit Picks has um, some super bulky yarn too. It's pretty reasonably priced that I think you could knit this out of. Okay, so I've been a Loopy Mango fan for a while. Oh, maybe I'll take this off. I'm like layering sweaters here over here. I've been a Loopy Mango fan for a while. As soon as they published this book, which I think I published this book a couple years ago. I bought it. And the reason being is that the Louis Mango patterns, like if you like that puff sleeve top, you can't buy them on Ravelry or on a website. You basically have to buy the yarn to get the pattern, which is what was nice about the Kinnikin pattern by Tara Lynn Morrison is that I think she has quite a few patterns that pair really well with Loopy Mango if you wanted to use Loopy Mango yarn but not their patterns. And yeah, or any super bulky yarn if you want to use more of a budget friendly yarn. And so the reason I want to buy the book is Loopy Mangle yarn is kind of expensive. And so I thought I could have these patterns and if I wanted, I could buy a Knit Pick super bulky or I could go to Michael's or Joanne's and buy a super bulky yarn and then make some of these sweaters in here. I think I also wanted the book because the yellow on the side, it's just, 
yellow and pink together. Uh, this is a really fun book for a beginner probably too because it has like a whole first section called for beginners. Okay, so I'm gonna show you a couple of sweaters about why I wanted it. It's the Urban Cowboy Sweater with the fringe on it. I really want that someday. Um, but I do think some of these sweaters would be good like gift sweaters for the right person because they all have like some really good positive use too. So this is the Urban Cowboy jacket with like the fringe. I also really like that. Um, I basically, to be honest, like almost every pattern in this book, it's like this headband, a little hair headband. Oh, here, this one. I was thinking this and this could be very cute too. Anyway, um, so my giveaway for this episode is a skein of the loopy mango. Just one skein of it because this is actually left over from this. I wish I had more, but this would be enough to do an accessory like a headband or a hat. And I would like to get this out to somebody like as soon as possible. And I've been kind of recording these every two weeks. And so two weeks from now is the start of Vlogmas and I'm just, I'm thinking I'm gonna do Vlogmas, but if I do do Vlogmas, I might not do one of these episodes. So the winner from this episode, I will announce on my very first Vlogmas. So that will probably come out December 2nd and then they can contact me. And I think this would make a really good gift knit. And then you could also like this yarn would be so good for gift knitting. I love gift knitting in super bulky yarn. You could knit a headband or a hat, or you could knit something for yourself, or you could save it and do a beret. This would be a good beret for in January. <laughs> so um, yeah, so I will announce the winner for this giveaway on my very first Vlogmas episode, which will be probably out December 2nd. And the question, well, any comment will enter you below. And, um, but the specific question I have is what's your favorite Christmas drink? I like, just love to hear it. So if you have a Christmas, favorite Christmas tea, a favorite Christmas latte, a favorite Christmas alcoholic drink, like literally tell me what your favorite Christmas drink is and Sip, sip, knit. Like, what's your favorite thing to sip, sip, knit? And today I've been just drinking a regular old coffee from a local roaster by us, Caravan Coffee. And, you know, it's 3.15 in the afternoon and still drinking coffee. <laughs> um, having my afternoon coffee. So, yeah. Um, in terms of Christmas drinks, I do love a peppermint mocha from... Not necessarily everywhere, but my favorite kind of peppermint mocha is some of the coffee stands out here. They will make your peppermint mocha with chocolate milk. So like the mocha part is made with chocolate milk and I love that. Um, yeah, so it's probably like, I, pro I pretty much only get peppermint mochas in December, but I have had my first peppermint mocha of the season already <laughs> and it's only November so I guess maybe two months of peppermint mocha season left um um also I did purchase a David's tea advent I did get the caffeine free version and not because I'm impartial to caffeine I, I love my caffeine but I they had like a spoiler where you could read some of the flavors and I just I liked kind of like what the caffeine free version flavor sounded like and that's arrived I'm also trying to refrain from opening that <laughs> yeah so tell me about your favorite Christmas drink and that'll enter you in for a prize also let me know if you've knit with loopy mango before or what your favorite super bulky is not everybody's a super bulky yarn knitter but I I do love I do I definitely have associations with super bulky knitting in Christmas time because I've 
I've actually knit a lot of things that are super bulky, but all of that has happened usually in the month of December. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much for coming by to my channel, supporting me by watching this episode. I, I just, I really appreciate the community here. It's really been life-giving to me and made me feel really joyful. And all right, so I'm going to transition to full personal mode right now. And so if you're not into hearing about non-knitting things, thank you so much for watching today. So the last time I recorded an episode, I was coming back from a lot of travel and I didn't really realize that I was planning like, what am I going to say for this personal segment? And I was feeling honestly, like I didn't have much to say. I was like, gosh, we haven't done anything. And I was thinking actually that's actually magical in itself is we, things have really slowed down for us since the last episode and we've been just at home, partially just with circumstances of not traveling like we were in October and, um, but also partly because the other circumstances were until and I got a cold and so that forces you to stay in. And so to be honest, I've never done as much Legos as I have since childhood. Like, you know, do you remember those days as a child, perhaps if you played with Legos where you'd like spend the whole day doing Legos? Like two Sundays ago, me and Matilda, um, we just play Legos from like the morning into the night. And I, I can't even remember if we changed out of our pajamas, but we just did Legos all day. We built two airplanes, a car, we're trying to make poo Legos. And so it's just fun to like be in your house and enjoy the things you like to do when you have. And that's sort of where we're at now. Um, read a lot of books. Now that we're well, we've gone back to the library. Our library is just fantastic. We checked out these, we have a library of things. We checked out these things that are like, kind of like a pencil that they're magnetized and you draw on them. Not really sure. I will say it was like kind of like an Etch-a-Sketch, but it's not, <laughs> I'm not sure what it's called, but I'll put in a picture here. And Matilda was working on her letters and yeah, so it's just been fun to slow down and we've resumed Tilla's in a few lessons. She does dance lessons, ballet and tap, and she does violin lessons and she does swim lessons. And we had to take a break from that when we had a cold. Um, and so we transitioned back to those. And I, Matilda really loves these things. And so sometimes I think like maybe we should take less lessons. <laughs> we should do less. Um, but it's like when you give up what she loves it. And <laughs> so I would say out of the lessons she has, she loves swimming the most. And she's very into swimming. And, and I, she's actually really good at it. And so it's just for me, I really like to hear her to swim. I'll usually sit on the side and knit and watch her and take pictures and things and videos and it's just me watching her knitting basically and as a mom like it's special to see this like tiny human that I love like thriving like and in her happy space and so it's like she's in her happy space which makes it my happy space and so, yeah, I really enjoy that. And she has a lot of fun at dance. And <laughs> I kind of have like one of those bad mom moments where um, I've had two bad mom moments with dance. <laughs> one was on Halloween, like the week of Halloween, it was like dress in your Halloween costume day. And I forgot. And so she was, yeah, the only, the only child at dance that did not have a Halloween costume on it and I felt so guilty and so I was like I'm gonna look up the next day I'm gonna remember the next thing and actually this week was pajama week and I was like I'm not going to forget it I'm going to remember I'm not going to let her down and I didn't write it in my planner I'm a paper planner I didn't write it in my planner and so here we were Wednesday morning getting ready for dance and we get to dance and I see everybody in their pajamas I was like, I forgot again. 
And I just, I really felt terrible about that. Um, the good news is that Matilda didn't care. Like she still had fun at dance and at least for the pajama day, she wasn't the only one who wasn't in pajamas. There was two other children that didn't show up in pajamas. And so I felt a little bit better. <laughs> I wasn't the only one that forgot. It's hard. Um, I think she was a little sad about Halloween that I forgot the costume. And, but I don't think she really cared about pajama day. <laughs> Um, I, since the last podcast, really the, we, Kyle and I have only did one thing like outside of our home other than like, you know, biking, whatever, and, um, going on walks and things. And that was one of the wineries we are a member at. They were having a wood fire pizza night. Um, so they basically when, I don't know, every month or quarter when your wine club shipment is ready for pickup. They have some sort of event and they had this wood fire pizza night and we make wood fire pizzas every Sunday night at home. It's pizza Sunday and I even have pizza earrings for it. We have a uni pizza maker. Are there any una, uni pizza oven people here? Let me know if you have one and you make pizzas. And we are just really into making our own pizzas on Sundays. It's become a tradition. We've done it for I guess a year and a half, not a year and a half, a year and a year and three months. So a year and a quarter, um, we've done it every Sunday. And so it was interesting to have wood fire pizza that we didn't make. Like it was delicious, but I could see, tell that I've gotten like really accustomed to like our dough, our ways, our toppings. And then Matilda, you could tell she was confused because we said we were having pizza and she loves to decorate pizzas. And so she was like, what? I, she was like, I want to make them. I want to make them. And it's like, well, they're already made. We're like, you can tell she was like super confused that like the pizza was already made. <laughs> and yeah, so that was really fun. And it was at night and basically you sat outside, but they had heaters and they had this plastic tent situation kind of thing. So you were totally warm. You could take your jacket off even though you're sitting outside. And yeah, so it was really fun. And that's really the only thing we've done in two weeks, which is unusual for us. We're kind of busy, like, like to go do things. And I just think we've really slowed down the last two weeks. And I really actually really enjoyed that. Today, I did something that I haven't done in a year and a half. So in the before times, before the pandemic, I would regularly ride my bike to work. I was a bike commuter. I didn't drive at all. I would ride my bike to work every day. And I would ride my bike around town and I would regularly go to coffee shops and read and write um, as a professor, like writing about our research that we do is like part of the thing we all do. And I would carve out space to do that. And I like to do that at a coffee shop. I like the background noise of people. I like to drink my latte or my tea. And we have some really awesome coffee shops in my town and so I it was just something that I loved to do and I actually forgot how much I loved to do it until today I was thinking about it and I was like I just haven't done this in a really long time I should make space to do that and so I actually haven't even rode my bike in a while I pulled my bike out and the tires are really soft and I had to pump my tires up and I I had to look for where my bike lock was. Um, and yeah, so I got on my bike and it was sunny out and it wasn't raining. And I rode two chapters and I got a candy cane tea latte and I sat down and I wrote for an hour and then I read for an hour and I didn't know how much I would miss, I miss that. And I'm still writing and reading, like that's part of what you do like as a professor, but it just felt different today, just being outside of my house. And I really appreciated it. And even like the act of getting on my bike and riding there like that, I didn't know how much I needed that in my life. And so I really missed that. And I hope to get, like, I hope to try to integrate that in more. It's easy to get into routines of being at home, but 
I just, I thought it was nice to get out of my house <laughs> and I appreciated that today. Okay, I will end on talking about reading. <sighs> to be honest, I've been in a bit of a write, uh, reading funk in the sense that like reading in some ways hasn't been giving me as much joy as it normally does. And what I mean by that is some of the books I've been reading have been giving me a ton of joy, like um, Such a Fun Age by Kylie Reed. I talked about that last podcast. I learned a lot from that book. I couldn't stop listening to it. I was listening to it as an audiobook. And so that, in that sense, I was still getting joy, but I think like there was like the physical books, like the joy of opening them and like getting cozy with them and digging in. I haven't felt that as much and that's kind of weird for me. <laughs> so I was kind of reflecting on why that was and here's one reason why. So here's a book, The Guest List. It's from my library and I was reading this because it's part of a book club at my library and I just wanted to be part of the book club. I didn't actually want to read the book. It's actually a good book. <laughs> if you like kind of mysteries, thrillers kind of situations. Um, it's from the Reese's Book Club. She always has kind of good picks, so it's a good book. Lucy Foley, The Guest List. But it's not what I love to read. It's not what I want to like curl up with. I'm not like a big thriller person. I was just reading it because I wanted to interact with people. <laughs> I didn't actually really want to read it. So I was like, I need to get back to myself and I need to read things that I actually want to read and not just because everybody else is reading it. <laughs> like, so here's the books that I read that, I, that give me joy. Books that I learn from. And so that can be anything, but of course it includes like my professor life stuff and fantasy. Like those are the things that I just want to be cozy with and read all the time. So I'm going to show you three books that I'm reading or going to read that I'm just so excited about that are bringing me joy. So the first book I'm going to show is a book that I'm going to start reading tonight. Look at that thick book. It's a Sarah J Maas book. It's a Throne of Glass novel. I think it's the fifth book. Sixth book. It's the sixth book in the series. I've been reading the Throne of Glass series. So I read the Throne of Glass, Crown of Midnight, Era of Fire, Queen of Shadows, Empire of Storms. So now I'm on this one. And they are fantasy books by Sarah J. Maas. I love the way this paperback smells. It's thick and delicious. And I just... I've had this for a while. I finished Empire of Storms a while ago. If I was just trying to catch up and reading other things for book club and whatnot. And I don't know, I just, I need to read what I want to. And it's such a simple thing to say, I want to read what I want to, but, um, so I'm very excited about reading that. And so books I'm learning from. So currently, right now, I'm reading these two books. So you can see the bookmarks are in there. And I'm going to share these. You may not actually like these or want to know about these books. Um, so there are math books, but I, I'm reading some other books that are mathy. But these are math books that I think that somebody who is mathematically curious or teaches math or look well, how I actually feel is everybody teaches math like if you <laughs> if you are a parent a grandparent a friend to somebody and you have an opinion about math or an experience and you share that that's in a way like teaching so everybody teaches math even like if you're a knitter and you're sharing like how you figured out your gauge swatch for your sweater and like that's math and so I think actually everybody is a mathematical teacher, a mathematical student, mathematical explorer. And so, but I know that some people have had bad experiences with math and so maybe that's 
Maybe you don't think you like to read about math, but here are two books that maybe you would enjoy. This one's the first one I would recommend, particularly if you've had bad experiences with math. It's called Mathematics for Human Flourishing. It's incredible. And this is actually my second time reading it. Um, basically, I read it out of order. There's like books, like there's chapters called like Justice, love, freedom, play. And I was doing some work where I was like needing to read about play or needing to read about power. And I had gone to those chapters and read them in isolation out of order, which sounds strange, but that's what I did. And so now I'm reading it beginning to end and it's getting more of a cohesive story, which is, you know, probably what I should have done in the first place and loving it. And it's by Francis Sue and Reflections by Christopher Jackson. And Christopher Jackson um, was actually an inmate in prison who was in communication with Francis. And Christopher was teaching himself math in prison and was writing Francis. And oh, just the way they talk about math is beautiful, creative, an endeavor makes me think that maybe you would enjoy it, perhaps. And this last book here is Math Without Numbers and by Milo Beckman. And it's so cool for me to read because basically like when I was in graduate school, when undergraduate, when I majored in math, we would take these classes where you're like, what is this? that we're learning. It's just like this really structural thing that you, I mean, it would surprise people to know that like, you know, I rarely used a calculator <laughs> in my sophomore, junior, senior year. And that's not because we were like, you know, just doing math in our head, but because everything was just focused on like logic and structure and like there wasn't a need to like do lots of computations um other than if we were using like software for something or coding and so and then in graduate school you know you learn more kind of the structural math and this analysis and the stuff that you do is like highly symbolic and i can see why people get lost in the woods about it but i'm reading this and he writes it with no um symbols this advanced math and it's illustrated by M. Arazo, and it's gorgeous. Like, and I'm learning from it, even though some of this math I've taken like several classes on, but it just really talked about it in a conceptual way so that anybody that doesn't necessarily have access to like the symbolic, the heavy symbolic stuff could understand some of these, um, kind of deep mathematical ideas. And it just, it really has me super excited to be honest. And so I like 10 out of 10 recommend this. And actually here's an illustration of what I'm talking about. Like there's a school mathematics here and then like all these other branches of math that we don't learn in school that like really influence our day-to-day -day lives. Like, you know, why our search engines work, why our phones work like why we can play video games, you know, politics, things like this. And anyway, this has become kind of mathy here at the end, so I'm going to stop it. <laughs> but if you're just a little mathematical curious or you have something mathematically curious in your life, um, I just, I really have to recommend these books. And so I'm not always going to talk about my kind of prof professorial reading on this channel, but I did think that these were two things I was reading that, I think anybody, anybody could enjoy. <laughs> okay, so thank you so much for being part of this community and joining me here. And I hope you have a really great rest of your November. I don't know if I will podcast before the end of November. I probably won't. And I'm on the fence about whether or not I should do an episode in December because I'm thinking about doing Vlogmas. So I'd love to know if you've made it this far, um, if you plan on watching my Vlogmas that I'm going to put out and, or if you, I guess what I'm trying to say is like, do you also want an episode in addition to Vlogmas or is Vlogmas sufficient? 
I know that it sometimes feels, I personally sometimes feel overwhelmed with Vlogmas because there's so many videos and I sometimes miss the episodes. So I don't really know what to do. So I'd love to know your opinion. And so yeah, anyway, have a great rest of your November and if you celebrate Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Bye.